Can you see them? What's up guys? Liberty Garden, August the 2nd. Getting ready to hit the road back home. Today I moved the cows to a new pasture. This pasture hasn't seen animals in about three weeks. So I'm gonna let the other pasture rest. And today they're moving on to here. So can you see them right now? There's one behind that little cedar right there. There's a black one over there. And the other ones are probably below. So, I was talking to my neighbor. I have a new neighbor. And we were talking about cattle and this and that. And he said that uh, he once had some longhorns and that they kept getting out of his fence. Kept jumping, jumping a tall fence. Well, the longhorn is a it's a derivative of the Spanish cattle that the Spanish brought over. All over the U.S. are called corriente, it means generic, no name, no brand cattles. These cows are real fidgety, real flighty. Um, they're about 900 pounds. They got a good set of horns on them. They're not aggressive, but if you corner them, they will jump a six-foot fence like nothing. So you know you, you need to know how to handle them. Uh, and if they can get away, they, they will gore you. They got some 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 real nice, uh, real nice horns on them. Not like the long horns. Now these are just short little horns that they come on that, that, that they get. And they're pointy. Uh, so the the long horn is uh, it's, uh, it was was made from those cows, from those Spanish cows. And those cows, those Spanish cows, you can get them real cheap on on, on Craigslist. You know, I, I saw some yesterday for three fifty, and they were pregnant already. You can get the uh, three three in ones, basically a cow calf and a and the cow's been exposed to a bull, it's pregnant, for about five hundred. Nobody wants them. You know, at the sale barn, they'll knock off your price. They, they'll discount it. They're they're not they're not considered beef cows, but they're pretty good. They're pretty good cows. Uh, they put on weight. The best thing is that they do great in, in real arid areas. I mean, that's what the Spanish brought them. <laughs> they, they do great. I mean, if the field is dry, they'll do great. If the field is green, they'll do even better. They don't starve. And they never have issues birthing, calving, nothing. Just nothing. It's just real, real, no sicknesses. You know, it's like the mud of cows. Except they don't put that much weight. But on the other hand, those cows, they, you're gonna be slaughtering a, a steer around a thousand pounds. It's not bad, that's not bad weight. By the time it's all said and done, you'll probably be getting about a good 35% on the freezer. So it's about 350 pounds, 350 pounds of meat. And the meat's real lean, so, you know, it doesn't have the marbling that, uh, that a lot of people like, uh, like the, on the Angus, the, the fat kind of gets into in, into the into the uh, muscle and, and it creates marbling. Now, cow, th those cows do get some marbling, I and mean, they, they don't have any fat on them on on their like on their back. Like uh, you know, look at the limousine cattle; they tend to build fat in the back, but they don't really marble too well. Or, or yeah. But the, those, those cows, they may not get a lot of marbling, but they do get a little marbling in between the muscle because they, uh, every animal needs fat. And they're real good animals, except that you need to handle them very, very closely. Otherwise, I mean, if I put some here and, and, and I leave, like, and I come back a week later, I might not find them in the, in the property. They, they require a little more human contact for them. To, they're, they're very close to going feral. You look at, you look at, a, at an Angus from the, from the back or you look at a Hereford, and they look a little bit wider, uh, especially if it's a beef master or an Angus or, or, or a Brahma. They look real, bad, real, 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 real uh, wide on the back. These ones are very, very narrow, lean animals. But you know, you get them real cheap, and uh, they mature. They're, 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 you see cows that so they're mature. They're mature quickly, so you can get a calf out of them real quick. And they don't damage your, their, your terrain so much. They're real light, light on the hoof. They, they, don't, they don't compact your soul too much. They don't eat much either. So for the price of two, you can get yourself uh, two, two, two Corriente cows to the butcher and get about 
700 pounds of meat and uh, it, you will have spent less than if you bet you got a an, a full Angus cow heifer waited for it and everything and you take it to the to the to the butcher you're gonna get about I don't know maybe 500 pounds of meat at the most at the most that be that would be a very 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 fat steer uh, probably you're looking more like around 450 so pound for pound I think the Corriente cows do a little better by the way just food for thought and uh, something about horned cows you know you hardly ever see horned cows anymore in the United States nobody likes them the feedlots don't like them uh, you know everything's been so industrialized commercialized uh, nobody prefers uh, horned cattle they, they, they penalize you on the price so the feedlot lot, lot doesn't like it because they like to cram a hundred cows in a small pen and feed them grains for, for two months before they slaughter them horrible practice uh, and when the cows have horn they're constantly goring each other and damaging the meat and damaging the hide it just it just doesn't make for a good uh, for a good experience it's more dangerous for those who handle them etc so a lot of these cows get dehorned when they're adults before they go before they go to the to the feedlots uh, the, they're hurting they, they, they lose appetite they lose weight so therefore if you take a horned cow to a cell barn you're gonna get penalized so most people have opted for the breeds that don't have horns Angus you know they, they've taken the horns out of the uh, uh, they bred the horns out of the Herefords Charlie etc and now we have a bunch of hornless cows uh, this is going to be a long video, I can tell already. But there's something about horned cows, especially like the Corriente cows, which I'm really tempted in getting a couple just for shits and giggles. Um, they are real good mamas. You know what? Coyotes don't mess with them. Coyotes will not freaking dare mess with those cows. We had the, uh, the ranch in Mexico, we had a lot of cows with horns. I mean, I would say that about 50-50. And uh, a lot of them are, you know, my, my grandfather's philosophy was get the shittiest cow and put the best bull on it, on her, and you're going to get a good calf. And there's so much truth to that wisdom. You get a shitty cow, you put a good bull on it, and it's going to deliver a good calf. I mean, it, it, it just gonna give you the, it's just going to give you the weight. And those cows with the horns, they are very hardy animals. I don't know what it is about the horns. I mean, I think it's got to do a little bit like, uh, like everything else. You make something, a kid, you make a kid uh, very soft and uh, the kid's gonna uh, not, not be very good. But these cows that have horns, man, they're, they're, they're tough little mothers and the coyotes don't mess with them. Uh, we seldom ever lost calves to, to coyotes. We seldom ever lost calves to birthing, or calving issues. They're just, just tough animals and they deliver. Where these, uh, European breeds and these uh, English breeds, they've been commercialized so much, they've been bred so much to meet a certain standard that I think they've taken some of the hardiness out of the animal. Uh, maybe, maybe it's just me, maybe. But I think uh, I, I, was, I was listening to a guy named Steiner, uh, Austrian, an Austrian, uh, that guy's a little bit in the fucking of uh, he what's his name Austria I forgot his last name is Steiner he was a philosopher of the uh, under 1800s or, or eight, born born in the late 1800s died in the uh, right like after World War One or something like that and he wrote about everything a lot of esoteric shit that he wrote about the, a lot of the Freemasons and crap like that and uh, he he wrote about um, cosmic forces and this and that but he does have a very good lecture on horned cows and agriculture and back in the day you know they, they, they didn't have these uh, they, they had not pinpointed out how it is now that you have uh, this uh, way of uh, cow rotations and using less inputs and just kind of reusing what the cow provides the manures and all stuff to make the soils better but they call it biodiversity he called it biodiversity in his lectures biodiversity and he does talk about the, the horned cattle. And he says that in his observations, obviously none, none of this is scientific, uh, horned cattle have better disease protection and have uh, better uh, survivability. 
And uh, when I look at these Corriente cows, it's not uncommon to have a cow that's 20 year old with a calf on the side. I mean, that's the way these cows roll, man. They, they earn their keep because <laughs> I guess they know they're not worth much. So it's very easy for the rancher to just send them to to, 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 to become dog food. And, uh, and these cows just keep on producing calf, calf, calf after calf, year after year. And uh, the, this guy Steiner, I forget his last name. He's an Austrian philosopher. Um, he he did, did a pretty interesting lecture, lecture about horns on cows and how they help a cow stay healthy. I don't know how much there is to that or not, but uh, I do tend to think that uh, our modern breeds are a little fragile. They're, uh, I mean, it kills me, you know, and I've said it this year on, on my videos, you know, but every time I see it, it's it just fucking, I know somebody's bleeding money every time I hear this. You know, I, I see guys selling cows on, on Facebook or on, on Craigslist and they're like, oh yeah, it'll come to you in a bucket, with a bucket, you know? It'll come to you with a bucket. Yeah, these come to me with a bucket too. I've shown, I've shown you videos. That's how they were trained. <laughs> this is the first time I ever give cows anything in a bucket. I've never done that. Um, cows were not meant to come to me or to anybody. The cows were meant to go eat grass and be rounded up, uh, sometimes by force, <laughs> and sold. <laughs> and these guys are, oh, they come to you in a bucket with a bucket. Well, yeah, yeah how much is that bucket costing you, right? And um, it, it makes for easy management, yes. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, the, these cows don't seem to be very hardy. Now, the, I mean, uh, these cows right now that I have here, they, yeah, they, they, they're putting on nice weight, a lot of weight. Actually, I've been looking at some pictures, and, and, and they're real nice. But I don't know how they would do if the terrain got real bad. I mean, I know Angus do very well, but uh, the, the, those Corinthian cows, I've seen them eat like freaking <laughs> weeds and... <laughs> cactus pears and whatever the hell is in front of them they'll leave. they're like half goats and half deer and i mean like a third goat a third deer and a third cow you know they're flighty fidgety <laughs> they don't put on much weight but they're real good mamas and uh, if you catch them and sell them you make a good money i think uh, my uncle right now has about 30 of them in the mountain that he hasn't been able to get down for about two years <laughs> he hasn't been able to catch him to sell them <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it is you know Anyway, folks, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, it's a little video about a little bit about everything related to cows. Until next time.